An Introduction to Thirds. The square root of 2, the square root of 5, the cube root of 11, these are all examples of thirds. For all three of these, you cannot simplify them by removing the square root or the cube root. So these are thirds. If you have the square root of uh, 16, you can simplify this to give you 4. So the square root of 16 is not a third. Likewise, the cube root of 8 is not a third because that gives you an exact value, 2. If you display the square root of 2 on your calculator, you can see from this decimal that it goes on forever without repeating. Numbers which go on forever without repeating are called irrational numbers. So thirds are irrational numbers. So we have irrational numbers like these. Um, they're not limited to just thirds, irrational numbers. You could have pi. Yeah, pi has uh, a decimal value that goes on um, forever without repeating. There's no pattern to um, uh, the value of pi. Uh, rational numbers, on the other hand, um, can be written as a fraction. So if you can write a, ra a rational number, uh, or any number in this form, it means it is rational. For instance, uh, 0 0.333, if that 3 was recurring, you can write that as 1 divided by 3 because you can write it as something divided by something like this and these are whole numbers then this is a rational number the number 2 here can be written as 2 over 1 again you can write 2 as a ratio like this 2 divided by 1 that means 2 is a rational number our focus here is on thirds, so I'm not interested in these, and I'm not interested in pi, so of numbers of this form. Adding or subtracting thirds. So let's say we have root 2 plus root 2 plus root 2. There are three lots of root 2, which is the same as three times root 2. Make sure if you mean 3 times root 2, you haven't written something that looks like this. That's the cube root of 2, which is different to 3 times root 2. 2 root 2 plus 5 root 2 gives 5 plus 2, that's 7 lots of root 2. Eight root three minus five root three is equal to eight minus five is three, so that's three lots of root three. Four root two plus five root seven. Well, you can't add these two together because that's a root two and that's a root seven. So we can't simplify this one. Multiplying thirds. The square root of A times the square root of B will give you this. So we're square rooting the product of A and B. Square root of 2 times the square root of 5 is equal to the square root of 2 times 5. And this bit inside the third we can simplify. 2 times 5 is 10 to give us the square root of 10. And this cannot be simplified. If it can be simplified, then you must do that step. 2 root 3 times 4 root 5. Now we can write this as 2 times 4 times root 3 times 
root 5. When you multiply numbers together, the order in which you multiply them doesn't matter. So I've just changed the order in which I'm multiplying. So 2 times 4 is 8. And then here we've got root 3 times root 5. And we can see from the example above, when you're multiplying two simple thirds like this, you just multiply that number with this one to give you this. So if I do 3 times 5 is 15. So all of this simplifies to 8 root 15. Squaring thirds. When you square a number, you're just multiplying the number by itself. So for instance, 3 squared is just 3 multiplied by itself. So if we square a third, so let's see if I'm square rooting um, uh, p here, and I'm going to square this, which means I'm going to multiply it by itself. And because we're multiplying here, I can write this as p times p, like this. p times p is p squared, and we know that the square root and the square will cancel each other to give this. So the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is equal to 2. And just to show that the, lo the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is equal to the square root of 2 times 2. 2 times 2 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So what we've seen from here is that the square root of 2 squared is 2. The square and the square roots cancel each other to just give you what's inside here, which is 2. Some more examples. So we have the square root of k squared will just give k. The square root of 8 squared will just give 8. The square root of, well, 2 times the square root of uh, 3, all of that squared. So what will this give us? This power of 2 goes on the 2 and it also goes on the square root of 3. 2 squared is 4. Root 3 squared is just 3. So the answer there is 12. An alternative way of getting the same answer here, because we're squaring, we're multiplying a number by itself, so 2 root 3 times 2 root 3, so it's multiplied by itself, is equal to 2 times 2 times root 3 times root 3. 2 times 2 is 4. Root 3 times root 3 is 3, which gives us 12. Same answer. The square root of a and you divide it by the square root of b, you can combine these together as a single fraction like this. So you can go from the left to the right, or from the right to the left, depending on what you need to use this uh, result for. So for instance, if we're dividing root 32 by root 2, we can write it like this. 32 divided by 2 is 16, and root 16 is 4. So quite a useful result. In this example we're dividing 3 root 125 by 2 root 5. I can rewrite this as 3 over 2 times root 125 over root 5. And using the result that we've just looked at, I can write this as a single third instead of two separate thirds. 
So this gives 3 over 2 times 125 over 5 and then the square root of that. So that's 3 over 2 times 125 divided by 5 is 25. And the square root of 25 is 5. And multiplying a fraction with the whole number, the whole number only multiplies the numerator. So that gives 15 over 2. Now thirds can be simplified like this. So let's say we've got the square root of 8. I want to write 8 as the product of two numbers. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to give me 8. One of them must be a square number. And the largest square number that goes into 8 is 4. And 4 times 2 is 8. Now this I can rewrite as the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. The square root of 4 is 2 times the root 2 here gives this 2 root 2. Now you must always simplify thirds wherever possible. So don't leave your final answer in this form. You will lose marks in the exam. You must simplify if you can. Not everything simplifies. So for instance, if you have the square root of 11, you can't simplify this. You can't write that as a square number times something. So that's not going to simplify. But where you can simplify, you must do so. The square root of 80 can be simplified. The largest square number that goes into 80 is 16. 16 times 5 gives 80. So these two are the same. And then we can split this as root 16 times root 5. Root 16 is 4. Root 5 you cannot simplify it any further. So we have 4 root 5. Starting with root 80 again, let's say this time you're thinking of a square number that um, uh, goes into 80 and the largest one that you happen to come up with is 4. So you've written that as 4 times 20 is equal to 80 there. So these two, the root of 80 is the same as root 4 times 20. And then you do this. Root 4 times root 20. Then root 4 is 2. And then you realize that root 20 itself can be simplified because root 20 can be written as 4 times 5, so a square number times something. And root 4 times root 5 will give 2 root 5 because root 4 is 2, root 5 cannot be simplified any further. So instead of the root 20 here, I'm going to use my 2 root 5 from down here. So times 2 root 5. And then multiplying these, I've got 2 lots of 2 root 5. So 4 root 5. So this is the same answer as previous, as here. Except it's taken more working out because I've failed this time to identify the largest square number that divides into 80. In this example we're simplifying root 24 plus 5 root 6. Now root 24 can be written as this plus the 5 root 6 root 4 is 2 and root 6 does not simplify any further. So 5 lots of root 6 plus 2 lots of uh, root 6 give 7 root 6. So this is the simplified answer to this. 2 plus root 3 squared 
something squared means it's multiplied by itself. So I've got 2 plus root 3 times 2 plus root 3. So 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times root 3 is 2 root 3 and 2 times root 3. So again 2 root 3 and root 3 times root 3 is 3. And simplifying these I've got 4 plus 3 so that's 7 plus 2 lots of root 3 plus 2 lots of uh, root 3 4 lots of root 3. In this example we're multiplying 3 minus root 5 with 3 plus root 5. So you've got the same terms but the opposite signs. Now you may recognize this as the difference of two squares. And if you do recognize this as the difference of two squares then you might want to do this. The first term squared and then there's a difference the second term squared. So you've got two squared terms with a difference. 3 squared is 9 minus root 5 squared is 5 so the answer is just 4. Now let's try this by multiplying all of the brackets out properly. So 3 times 3 is 9 3 times root 5 is 3 root 5 3 times minus root 5 is minus 3 root 5 and root 5 times root 5 well minus root 5 times root 5 is minus 5. These two terms are the same but with opposite signs they cancel. The 9 minus 5 is 4. A key thing to remember from this example is that we have thirds that we're multiplying. Because these two terms are the same but the signs are opposite, multiplying all this out gives us a result without thirds. This is going to be important when we rationalize the denominator. So have a look at the next video for rationalizing the denominator and we're going to come across this.